Hello everyone, my name is Audrey. I have been asked to make a guide about making gold in Lost Ark. So in this video, I will show you the ways of making it. So let's get started and make you all rich. So here we have the Void Dungeons, also called Weekly Dungeons. Those Weekly Dungeons can be farmed once a week per character, which means the more characters you have, the more dungeons you will be able to run, which means the more gold you will be able to get per week. Once your, your, once your item level gets to the maximum, for example in this one, if it gets to 415, as you can see, your gold and limited and your experience is also limited. So you will get just a bag in the end, okay? Every last dungeon from each, from each tier gives you one bag. The bag is actually tradable and can be sold in the market, which also means some income. However, it is always good to farm those because they can give you cards, which are also very, very important. Okay, so now this time we have the Abyss Raids right here, okay, which have the blue, they have the, the blue flag. So these, they are very similar to the Void Dungeons, which means you also have a minimum item level to enter and a maximum item level to actually complete. If you complete this above this item level, which is 825, you will not get gold for this. So what you're gonna get is possibly cards, which are very important, and you will also get a bag of emeralds in this case, because it is grade one. This is Kaishur, it's gonna be grade two, so it will give you sapphire bags, and this is Argos, which, will, which is grade 3, and will give you Citrine bags. The names can be different on the global server. So this is actually worth farming per character. So if your character is, let's say, 820, and if you are above to level up, it is advised that you actually run this raid before reaching the maximum level, so you can get these goals. Otherwise, you're gonna have to wait for this raid, which is 870, to get gold again from the raids. And the last one, which is 1370 item level. Next, we have the Chaos Gates. The Chaos Gates, they come in specific days. In this case, they, they, they will be one on Tuesday at 20 server time. Those Chaos Gates, they are very good because they give you scrolls. If you get blue scrolls, you should save up to 3 and exchange for a purple one. If you get purple or higher, you should find a group and go and run the content. Every party member should have one scroll, so you can, you can run it 4 times. To know the location, you right click on it and there is an X, like a cross, where you go. And every party member needs to be on the same channel and on the same area in order to be able to enter. Those scrolls, they are super, super valuable and they will give you very, very good gold. For further information and to give you more advanced guide how to run Chaos Gate properly and how to get a party and how to see on the notification bell how to give you some tips and tricks, just please let me know and I will definitely make one. But those scrolls and Chaos Gate is definitely a very, very good source of gold. And next, we have the world bosses, which similar to the Chaos Gate, they also come in specific days of the week. I'll give an example, on Thursday, we have a field boss at 20 server time. Those world bosses, they also give you tradable items that you can actually sell for gold. And for example, accessories as well, that you can also sell or keep for yourself, if the stats are actually good for your character. You can get collectible items, which I can explain in a future video, as well as runes, which I can also explain in a future video. So those world bosses are a very good source of gold, and they are definitely worth farming. Another good source of gold, a very very good source of weekly gold, it's actually your opponent badges, those ones, which you can only complete with one character per week and you should only claim with one character as well. If I claim with this character right now, two badges, and if I go with another character and I claim one, 
those badges they will become like bonds to the character so i will not be able to move them between the characters so you should always claim those with your main character those badges you can come to this npc here the epona badge exchange choose the one that you like the most personally i go for this one because i like the chance for the jackpot and you can also get a very good gold per week in order to get those badges, you simply have to complete daily quests, which you can make three per day, and you can also complete weekly quests, which you can make three per week. Personal advice, just get two characters level 50, make three weekly quests per character, and with two characters, it will be enough to complete all those badges. Another easy way to get gold is by participating in some specific Gold Island events. Those Gold Island events, they will come completely random during the week. You can always preview on the previous day around like midnight server time, the next day what the islands will be. Sometimes there will, there will be one event, sometimes there, there will be two events. You should always preview if there is a gold reward. As you can see right here on the Island of the Doomed, there is a gold a gold, um, a gold coin, which means there will be a gold reward, those islands should always be worth of your time, because they're easy and it's really, really fast gold. And now we have the garden raids. Garden raids, you can actually make it twice per day. As you can see with my mouse, if I go on top, it shows me the name of the boss that I have completed. If it shows empty, it means you still have two souls per day. So two souls means that you can go two runs per day and you will get loot. If you complete those two souls, later on you can get as many times as you want, your loot will be really, really low. So this is actually good to make gold, because if you farm those materials, those crystals, which you can see in each tier, green, this is blue, blue, and here it's going to be orange and orange those are good to farm because you have two options you can actually use to upgrade your gear or you can actually sell them because if you farm the guardians those materials they will become tradable as you can see in my inventory right here i have 88 arctus which are tradable and i have here 19 which are bound so those tradable they come from here from guardians so it is a very good source to make gold as well. Now we have the accessories, the ability stones and the gear. So as I told you before, those guardians, they are good for those crystals, but they are very good as well for the accessories because those accessories are also tradable. So you can either use or sell. So it is a very good source of money as well for those and for the ability stones. If they have good stats, you can actually sell them. If not, you can destroy and just try to exchange later on for an, for an, an NPC and get a better one. And then we also have the Chaos Dungeons that you can have two runs a day. In those Chaos, you can actually get this gear that you can try to sell if you have good tripods. Uh, for tripods, details and explanation. I can also make a video later on when I explain what they are and what they are for. Uh, you can also get accessories in those Chaos Dungeons, which you can use or sell as well, and Ability Stones. This is also a very source of money. Additionally, you also get like those tickets, which is called Boss Rush, and the cubes. The Boss Rush is good because it will give you good crystals, but they will be bound, but very good for your gear progression and the cubes because the cubes will also give you a chance for upgrading materials will give you a chance for books inside if you're lucky and will give you always silver coins and if you're lucky you can get additional silver coins very easy content and very good to get silver coins and extra loot if you're lucky another way to make gold is by completing void dungeons which, as you can see, to enter it's 1325 and 1340. And some people will definitely struggle with those mechanics because they have no knowledge or because they have low gear. So, if you are like above 1415, which is the maximum item level, and you will not get gold anymore, how do you get gold? It's quite simple. If you have good gear, 
good engravings and good knowledge about the mechanics, you can definitely carry other three people that will definitely pay you half of the price that they will get and you will carry them through those two instances. So those two dungeons, you're gonna carry them and you're gonna get paid for it. Or you can just be kind and just carry, carry them for free, but if you are selling runs for money, this is a very good source. Another way is making those raids. As you can see, Argo's raid starts at 1370 for phase 1, phase 2 1385, and phase 3 it's gonna be 1400. So usually people Let's say a group of three or four people that feel comfortable, have good equipment, good engravings, good knowledge, and know every single tactic, they go and they carry other four people because it is a, a, a raid of eight people. So they will carry those people, those people will pay the carry team, and that's another way to make gold. And why people pay for this one? Because it drops the legendary gear and also drops the materials needed to craft, which is this, those, those four materials, these the Argos tendon, the blood, the claw, and the jaw. So with these, you can actually craft your gear. Another way to make gold, it's actually sell the boss rush, as you can see right here. This person here, which has a high item level, as you can see, you can inspect. You know, he has actually quite nice engravings, nice item level. So this one is gonna carry those three, and those three will pay gold to this person. So they will simply pay this gold, but nothing else. And in the end, they will get those ones just bound, okay? They will be bound crystals. So they will not be tradable. They will be bound. So those people that like to pay to progress with the gear and so on, they can actually take this method. It's actually cheaper. But if you are selling runs, you can save those tickets right here, which is called Ticket of the Sun Path, which can be also called Boss Rush, depending on the translation on the global release. But as you can see, it's going to be Tier 3 Boss Rush. You can simply save them and sell them. If you are 1415 or 1430, and if you feel comfortable enough, you can go and definitely sell those runs and make some gold for yourself. Another way to make gold is also through life skills. As you can see, life skills, the more you progress, the more skills you can unlock. For example, on herbalism, if I will get level level 20, I will get one more skill, as well as fishing or archaeology. However, I did invest into lumbering and also mining, because I am not selling those materials and I am actually saving them for my estate. Your estate, I can explain it to you on a future video, it is quite complex but will allow you to progress with your research, will allow you to get some materials, will allow you to actually craft potions and sell them or use them for yourself, it will give you many, many options. However, life skills, you can actually go collect herbs, woods, rocks, you can even fish, and you can use or you can sell for gold. If you want more uh, explanation about it, please let me know and I will definitely consider a video about it, which is also a very complex subject. Let's also mention that during your leveling, you will definitely find those materials. Let's go for the first map here for Artemis, which again will most likely have another name on the global release, but first map, you have those materials right here. Usually the green, the green books they, don't, they usually don't sell for so much, but in the beginning of the game, they may as well sell for a good money. However, if you complete your adventure book, do not trash those away. First, check the market, and if they are worth good gold, you should definitely sell them. If you see that uh, there is one or two or, or even three materials at a very good price, you can go for the lower maps. If you, uh, if you like to grind, to kill mobs, let's say for one hour, two hours, if you are one of those grinders, uh, and if you just enjoy to kill mobs over over and over again, sure, go for, go for those maps, kill the mobs, drop those items, and sell them. They will definitely sell for a good price. Let's take a look at the market. If you go to here, Adventure Book, let's put all, and let's just select some blue quality. As you can see, some can be cheap, but some of them start to be quite expensive right here. And I say expensive, because you don't need only one book. Usually when you need, you need like four, six, eight, or, or more than eight. So those are definitely worth keeping or even farming if you are, if you like to grind 
and Sulfur Gold. Especially in the beginning that everyone will definitely go for those adventure books because they will unlock good rewards. Then again, if you need more explanation about those, let me know and I will make one video about adventure books. Jewels can also be sold to get quite a nice amount of gold. To sell those jewels, let's say I have you level 7, I have you level 5, 7 and 5, 5 and 7, and 6 and 7. Those jewels, if you get like level 7 or level 8, they are considered kind of high already. So if you want to go for level 9, you can. But if you prefer to simply stay with level 7 and level 8, and if you say that it's not really worth to go for level 8 or 9, you can definitely farm new ones, level them up to, up to level 7 as, as well, or, or 8, it, it's definitely up to you. You go here, and you can see that they definitely sell for quite a nice amount of gold. Uh, let's see here. Those are level 5, but if you see here, level 6, they start to cost like 3000 gold almost. And let me tell you that yesterday and two days ago, this was full of level of level 7, and right now they're all gone. Because many people, they have no patience to simply level, the, level the, the jewels, so you can simply level them yourself, sell them, and make some nice amount of gold. Again, to farm those jewels, you can get from Chaos Dungeons, you can get from Boss Rush, there are some sources where you can actually farm those. So it's entirely up to you if you want to level up and keep them for yourself, or if you want to level up up to level 7 or 8 and just sell. And while you are doing your C events, that usually they appear... Let me just see if there is one. For example, like this. Say, Marine Events, which you have like many levels. And in fact, you have like the Harmony Gate, which the Harmony Gate, if you see the loot, it gives you pirate coins, given it coins, but there is also a small chance that you're going to receive a golden map. That golden map will be will be able to give you like some nice rewards such as small gold, legacy points. So to go to those harmony gates, you need to get those keys, which is the key of the harmony gate. You will get a key uh, rewarding in this case regarding the, the zone you are you, you are making, let's say if you make in the first zone here the zone of the map, you're gonna get the harmony key. If you get the zone, you're gonna get like a key for the wisdom, Humil uh, humility, earth, and so on. And here it goes for the life gate. Again, the names can be different on the global release. If you actually have those keys, as I have in here, you you will be able to go inside of that gate, have a mini game. And then in the end, you're going to have a chest to open that will most likely give you given a coins, which is a nice currency. It's a nice C currency. You also have a small chance to get the, the map, the secret map, as I explained before. That secret map, it's usually solo. It's for one person. You right click the map. As you can see, you right click the map in here and you're going to have a cross. It will be a random location. It can be scuba diving, can be a boat, can be a discovery chest, can be any sort of mini game. And that mini game, as you can see in here, can give you gold, can give you legacy points, can give you other rewards as well. But mostly and most important, the gold, which is the most valuable currency in game. With Affinity, which again, can have another name in the global release, you can actually go here, to adventure affinity and you also have one time gold rewards let me give an example of this npc for example nia which is in papunica if you click on the search you're going to see all the rewards you're going to get per level of affinity which means reputation so the first one will give you ancient platino which are coins that will give you silver coins but you are more interested in the gold right so for the next level you're gonna have like gold coins which gives you 14 coins and each coin will give you like 100 gold so gold coins times one times times 100 but you're gonna get 14 so like this npc you're gonna have more for example shanna shanna will also get you some gold coins right here okay right here which is a bit high reputation but just an example 
and if you check other NPCs just before, there will be a few that will give you just the same. It's also very, very noticeable and important to mention that those potions here are legacy and are very, very important as well for your progression, which if you are interested in, if you want to know more about it, just let me know and I can also work on the guides about how those work and how to upgrade this here, the nature points and what they are used for. The weekly ghost ship is also very important to mention because this ship, according with your item level, you have three ghost ships, which in the beginning of the game will most likely have one or two. This one was added like recently, but I'm gonna go through all three of them. The first one will be the Kivena Celesta, which is item level 415. This is 915 and this is 1370. They all give exactly the same loot, but in different tiers, okay? So the best one for high level people will definitely be the, Le the Leviathan, because they all give upgrading materials, they all give books, and what you want is the highest ones. So if you have the item level for the highest, you should always go for the highest. However, this, uh, this ship can only be completed once per week and it is legacy which means if you complete it with one character it will be for your wall account so you will not complete it with two characters high level only one and then there are some gold rewards in here as well where you can go for character or you can go for legacy as you can see you have some rewards for example this gold here okay that you can complete it one time as well for legacy and character per character as well you see as you can see level three it gives one time clear, okay? So one time clear also gives you gold. It is not much, but it is a, it is a very good help, at least for the first clear, and will definitely help you to progress with your gear. As you can see, there is more gold in here. Phase one with Mystic, phase two, and phase three. So every single time that you're gonna clear one dungeon or one raid for the first time, you will also get gold. It's actually very noticeable uh, and it's actually worth mentioning that this specific boat, if you clear it three times, this one, you will also get one time gold. Collecting masterpieces will also give you the opportunity to exchange for gold. Among other very, very valuable resources and rewards, you can also get gold from those. As you can see, if you get enough amount of, uh, of coins, 20, 20 masterpieces, you will get a chest. This is a one-time reward as well, and it is legacy. You will also get 3,000 gold chest. If you get more, if you get 30, you're gonna go for 5k. If you get 34, you will definitely get 8k, and if you get 38, you're gonna get 13k. You do have another valuable rewards right here, but since we are talking about gold, it's very, very, uh, it's very, very good, and it's worth it to know that if you collect those, you can definitely exchange for those, and it is a one-time exchange. And uh, let's say that you actually are financial, financially like stable, you have no problem with money, so, and you want to invest into the game to progress your way faster. Can you do it? Yes, you can. You can actually buy from the cash shop immediately items such as potions, upgradable items, and so on. But you can also buy here. You, you can also sell your crystals. But if you want to buy those blue crystals with gold, you can. But if you want to sell to make gold, you can also do so. And how? You're going to have those yellow crystals that you actually buy with real money. And you can actually trade for blue crystals, which you will then sell for gold right in the game. So you sell those blue for gold and someone else will come here and will buy them. Let's say I want to buy 200. I'm going to pay 1 point almost 4k, right? So this is me paying and this is someone selling. So this is one way for you to actually make um, to actually make gold, okay? Another way is simply go to the marketplace and sell skins. You go to the shop, of first go to go to the cash shop and you come here and you can sell mounts can sell those mounts, you can sell pets, and you can also sell avatars. Avatars, which are the skins. So all of those can be sold for gold. And some of them can actually go for quite a high price. So 
as you can see, if you are, again, financially so financial, uh, stable, if you are good in life, if you have no problems, you sure can invest some money into the game, get some skins, get some mounts, get some pets, sell them for gold, or simply, like, buy those blue crystals and just sell them for gold and get directly the gold, like, right away. So those are two ways that you can actually go, for, you, you, you can go for them. However, however, it is not necessary. If you play a day, let's say one to two hours, even three, even three hours, you can definitely play like two to three characters and you can actually farm your way really, really easy and you can progress completely fine without spending so much money. However, I support that you actually spend some money to buy skins for yourself because, you know, looking good, having something that you like will definitely make you enjoy your character a lot more and you will for sure, like for sure, enjoy running content, running dungeons, running PvP with a character that looks just the way you want. Okay, so in the end, basically to enjoy the game, all you have to do is, and what I advise as well is, get one or two mains and let's say two or three alts. In the end, if you have one main and two or three alts that you actually enjoy and you like to play with, you're gonna be just fine. Running your weekly dungeons, your weekly raids, your chaos gates, which is actually really fast and takes not so long. Farming some world bosses, which is always very welcome. Opponent badges, which are basically passive income for you to do your daily and weekly activities. And let's say weekly guardians as well. Those will give you enough income for everything you need in-game. And if you're lucky, and if you get a good accessory, if you get uh, many gold events, ability stones, if you're lucky with the drops, you're gonna get like a big jackpot. But basically, weekly voids, weekly raids, chaos gate, world bosses, opponent badges, gold events, only those that you can make on a daily on a daily basis will be just enough and will generate you enough gold for your main or for your mains, depending on your time and depending on how many character on how many characters. You're gonna play and uh, depending on your progression in the game so in my opinion and what i will do is i will get one slash two mains and two slash three alts and that's about it and that will generate me enough gold for everything i hope you enjoyed this video i hope it was useful if you have any questions please just ask on the comments below i will also leave my twitch channel with where i usually stream to help people as much as i can you are welcome to join, ask as many questions as you have, and I wish you all a very good day, good afternoon, or good night, depending on where you're living, and I will see you all in the global release.